Um, so I always start out with and ask how many people know about 826. Okay, and that's awesome because it's, it's always great. And so how many of you know who Dave Eggers is? Okay, that, then we have a great basis to start. So um, we are A26 National. We're a network of nonprofit tutoring and writing centers. And we focus on creative writing and after school tutoring. And we realize that through this, we help students boost their um, self esteem and their self confidence. And this is Isaiah, who wrote the story of the Tooth Fairy, who stole his teeth. So, <laughs> um, so one of the things as we look at, we think about 826, we're in eight locations across the country. Um, we started here in the Bay Area in 2002. Next year is our 10th anniversary. Um, and we sort of spread up and popped up, and we'll talk, I'll talk a bit about how that happened. But I want to start with our first location, which is 826 Valencia. So Dave Eggers is one of our co-founders. And he's a writer. And as he's writing his first book, A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius, um, Dave's parents, if you know the book, his parents passed away. His parents are teachers. And so in the mission at the time, that neighborhood was very different than it is now. And so there are tons of kids around and running around and doing stuff after school. And he's sitting around going, well, why aren't these kids doing anything? They're like after school, they're just hanging out. So he knows a lot of writers. And a lot of writers in the time that they don't, aren't writing and sitting in basements or barns writing, they're actually have free time. So he asked a couple of his people, well, why don't we st start tutoring kids? Why don't we just sort of give up that free time and start working with kids? So they decided to put up a shingle and open up a front and put up a shingle that said free tutoring. Now, it's like free ice cream. How many kids are actually going to run in and go, I want to be tutored. This is great. Um, so they decided, well, let's build out the space. And this space used to be an old, um, an old gym. And so they built it out. And they were about to open this beautiful new tutoring center when the landlord comes to them and says, you know what? You have, it's zoned for retail. You can't just tutor kids here. You have to do something. So you, when you go inside, and if you've been, you can see all the exposed wood. And it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. And so they decided, well, how about we stick it to the man and sell pirate supplies? So when you go inside, you'll see it is this sort of magical, very different place of books and hats and eye patches and things like scurvy be gone and peg leg oil, <laughs> all designed by volunteers. But it was this thing of like, well, if we have to sell something, let's do it and it's going to be fun and we like it. So the idea and the concept of the store is it's supplies for the working buccaneer. So in the back of the tutoring center, if you look and you can see behind the velvet rope, there's the tutoring center. So it's built out. And the space is built out for kids. It's not for adults. So the chairs are smaller than these. They're very uncomfortable for people like us. <laughs> and they're supposed to be. But the kids, this, our tutoring center houses about 50 kids a day, month, Sunday through Thursday. And they can come in and be tutored not just on writing, math, science, what have you. And the volunteers come in, and they sign up, their background checked, and they work with the students on whatever. So when the kids will come in after school, the volunteers are sitting there, the kids pick a volunteer, and they work with that volunteer. And so when we started, it was supposed to be just a drop-in tutoring center. And so kids would come in whenever they came in. Um, but what wound up happening was the kids kept coming back day after day. And the parents kept coming back. And they're like, well, this is actually some sort of, it's, we have some synergy here. There are kids who need the help, and why would they go anyplace else? So this space here, it's filled with books. It's beautiful. And we like to call it this idea of third place, of it's not school, it's not home. It's a third place where the kids own it. And it's magical, and it's whimsical. And as Dave said, and we all say, kids are weird. You know, They come up with weird stories. They talk about their teeth, and they have pet writing month, and they write to dogs and fish and everything. <laughs> so. We have this magical, amazing place. So last year, we worked with about 29,000 kids. And we have 6,000 active volunteers who work across the country. And the volunteers find out about us through word of mouth, through McSweeney's. They hear about it, or they walk into the pirate store, and they look around and go, well, what? I don't, like, much like myself, what is up with this pirate store thing going on? So this model was so successful 
and so great. And Valencia alone sees about 6,000 kids a year. And the thing about the store is we actually sell products. So the store covers about 20% of the revenue. So our, we're, we are a nonprofit like everyone else. We are, all our programming is free to kids. So any kid that comes in, low income, we work with 6 to 18. That, our sweet spot is really middle school. And I think middle schoolers are weirder than anybody else. So they've got more ideas about strange things in space. So um, that's pretty much our sweet spot. But really, we work with all kids. And when this space fills up, we decided, well, what do we do next? So we started doing work in schools. And so we started being contacted by teachers who were interested in the work that we did. And so now what we do is we will go into classrooms with teachers with a cadre of volunteers, so 10 to 15 volunteers, to work with a teacher on whatever writing project they have. And you'll see out in the front, there are a couple of books that we've produced, which are writing lessons, but also books that the kids produce. So we do a lot of publishing of student writing. We publish everything. Anything they write, we publish, so that they can take it home and they can look at it and they'll always have a copy of it. So after San Francisco, we went to New York. So in Brooklyn and Park Slope, you will find the Brooklyn Superhero Supply Store. And we wondered, OK, is this actually going to work? Is this actually going to make it? So if you go into the Superhero Supply Store, think Office Depot for superheroes. <laughs> so there's cape testers and gears. You can get your secret identity the works. And where you're seeing this angle is, for this space, there's actually a secret door. So customers will be in the store, and, or we'll be talking to people. And suddenly, five, ten, five, ten-year-olds will walk in, open the secret door, and shuffle in the back, and then close the secret door. <laughs> and everyone, you'll see people going, where'd those kids go? And they went in the back, and they're being tutored, and they're working. So after, you know, the model is, it's, it's been so successful for us that people, what happens is nonprofits in different cities have said, well, you know what? What if we adopt this model? What if we become A26? So we do a training program for them. And we went to LA next. And so LA is wherever you are, we're already then. It's the Echo Park Time Travel Mart. So think of 7-Eleven for time travelers, where we sell mammoth chunks and robot milk, anything that you could think the um, slurping machine is broken and it tells you to come back yesterday. <laughs> and the products are all designed by our volunteers and designers and people who love the model. People come in, and people send us designs for products. So imagine adults sitting in a room trying to be weird and come up with something like mammoth chunks. That's what we do. You can see why I love this job so much. Um, but the space, like we said, the kids, there's, in the beginning, they have to work on their homework. So they have an hour, hour and a half of homework. Then they have to read. And then after they read, they all write. So there's always a model to it. So they always have to do this. So there are always these parts. And the writing part, we always publish. The reading part, we understand that reading is connected to writing. So from there, we moved to Chicago and Seattle. So the boring store is actually a spy store. And the Greenwood Space Travel Supply Company is a um, space travel supply store for anyone who goes to the Space Needle and you want to take off, that's where you go. And then we have Robot Supply and Repair in Michigan. And we're expanding into Detroit. Yeah. All right. But you know, it is this place of creativity. Our, for us, the mission really is to get kids creating and to get kids thinking about art and expressing themselves in a way that they never get to express themselves in school. We all know in schools, are, the arts education programs are all disappearing. Anything that's creativity and is, is disappearing from schools, except we have our president and everyone telling us, well, we have to be innovative and we have to be creative. It makes no sense to me. So we're trying to hold that up in our third place in here. So um, from there, we went to Boston. And this is the Greater Boston Bigfoot Research Institute. <laughs> it is for cryptozoologists and aspiring cryptozoologists. And our newest center is in, <laughs> is in DC. It's called the Museum of Unnatural History. We opened this up about a year ago. It came on about the same time I took over the job of CEO. And what we wanted to do was create the weirdest museum. It's, it's a museum for animals and things on the evolutionary chain that decided to just give up. <laughs> so there's an elephant, there's an inverted coyote, 
there's all sorts of things, and it's really a space where the kids can come in. Think museum gift shop, but the kids come in, and this is the first place they come into. And for us, the storefronts destigmatize the tutoring experience. So the kids aren't thinking, you know, when the, you talk to the kids and they're like, where are you going tutoring? They're like, oh no, I'm going to 826. Or no, I'm going to the museum, I'm going to the Unnatural History Museum. Or I'm going to the pirate store. And then the other kids want to go, well, I want to go to a pirate store. Who doesn't want to go to a pirate store? Come on. And so, like I said, we had our volunteers came up with the concept and we worked with it. So the koala containment unit there, because koalas are not as nice as you think they are. <laughs> and that is saber tooth dental floss. So it was sort of creating everyday objects and making them different and making them magical. And the kids spend hours in the store and the kids write about what they see in the store. And it really is between the kids and the volunteers. I mean, you walk, it's a different place when you walk in. And that's been our whole plan, is that it's always going to be different. Your experience is going to be different. It's going to be fun. And you're just going to ex be excited about doing it. If you go into the, how many of you have been mopped if you've gone into the pirate store? You've been mopped. You cannot tell anyone what mopping is. So when you go into the pirate store, I'm just going to, you'll, you'll find out. So <laughs> these are the programs we provide. We provide tutoring writing workshops, those are after school. The class field trip, we actually bring the kids to us, and a class will work for two hours on a book. And they will work with a group of volunteers and an illustrator who will sit there and bring their drawings to life. And the kids take their author photos, because every book has an author photo of a kid. And they will get, after that two hours, they have a book where they write the ending themselves. And then the book's bound and given to them at the end of the day. And they take the book home. So you can hear, and you, uh, there are kids you talk to who've been coming to 826 for five and six years who still have that book. And, the, and imagine the pride of being a published author at age 10. You, you can't beat that. So our in-schools programs we talked about, which are the, where we go in and work with teachers, and we work with teachers, and provide that volunteer help to lower that ratio. So instead of it being 30 on one, it turns out to be Three, one volunteer to every three kids, but the kids get individualized attention. And the student publishing, like I said, we publish everything. So these are some of the books that we've done. And I live real close to where you used to live is the book that our kids across the nation wrote to Michelle Obama. The book up in the corner, Don't Stay Out Late, is a book of fairy tales for kids written by kids. So our kids wrote fairy tales to their little brothers and sisters. And the book in the corner, Be Honest, is a collection of work from students for things that they wish their teachers knew about school. And so we know the approach works. We're doing a lot of research now. We've got a lot of qualitative research. About 91% of the students really are proud of the work they've done. The parents are loving, and the parents are seeing a difference. And all this is made possible by our volunteers. So that is 826. And thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.